Hey, hey folks, welcome to Dre's Take. So this week, I wanna compare 2022 to the 80s. For a lot of you who might not know the history of mortgage rates in the 80s, in an effort to combat inflation, we've seen similar tactics from the Federal Reserve where they aggressively raised interest rates and indirectly, mortgage rates were affected dramatically, hitting a peak of 18.6% in October of 1981. That's crazy. Imagine going and applying for a mortgage today and the rate was 18%. And we're over here freaking out about, you know, six. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, but I get it. Home prices are much more uh, expensive these days and coupled with the higher rate, it does make a dramatic difference in your monthly payment. But here's the question. Homes still sold in the 80s during this elevated interest rate environment. How? That's the real question. And how can we look at the past to see what could potentially help us here in 2022? So we've already kind of discussed some of the similarities. The Federal Reserve reacting to high inflationary pressure and moving the Fed funds rate up dramatically or interest rates dramatically. Subsequently, mortgage rates running through the roof as well. So here's how homes were still being sold in the 80s. Creative financing. Now, this is a term a lot of folks may have not heard outside of real estate professionals. Creative financing is when you find workarounds or ways to finance deals outside of your traditional uh, qualifying or QM mortgages, such as FHA or conventional or VA or USDA style loans. So let's talk about a couple of those creative financing techniques and how they could work today. Number one would be assumable loans. So prior to 1982, pretty much all loans were assumable. Uh, and this means that the new buyer could come in if they had the cash, uh, they could make the standard market offer, pay the seller their equity in cash, sort of as a down payment, and then just take on the existing loan. Why would this make sense? Well, because if rates were 18% in 1981, for instance, and the seller had a, an existing mortgage that was only 10%, well, it would make a whole lot of sense for the new buyer to just assume the old loan that was only at 10%. Now, in 1982, uh, Congress stepped in and kind of put some barriers in the way that made loans not so readily assumable. But a lot of your typical loans are still assumable. You'd obviously apply with the bank once you're approved and the closing took place, the loan would go ahead and transfer into the new borrower's or buyer's name. Only a subset of loans are now readily assumable, but those include your government insured loans, your FHA, your USDA, your VA loans. So while this isn't a magic pill for every deal uh, in those where it could be possible to work out an assumable loan. Think about that right now. You go in to buy a property and maybe the seller has a 3% loan because they refinanced a couple years ago. Well, if you could pay them the equity out of pocket as your down payment, maybe you got the sale of your home or something like that and you could pay them a hundred grand or 200 grand, whatever their, their equity is, and then just assume the remaining balance on their old loan, on their old mortgage at a 3% rate. I'm sure you'd be quite happy. It would make a lot of economical sense in most scenarios. And so you can do that. That's called assumable or assuming a loan. That's one creative financing technique. Another might be what's called seller financing. And so maybe the seller would be willing to hold the mortgage. If they own the property outright, you pay them uh, an acceptable down payment, you know, maybe 20, 30 percent, and then they'd hold a mortgage for you. Instead of the bank, the seller holds the mortgage. You own the property, but they have the mortgage on the property and you're paying them instead of the bank. And maybe they'll do this at a lower rate than what the bank would accept. Well, why would they do that? Well, for a couple reasons. In an environment where homes aren't selling so fast, this allows them to control the terms around the home actually selling. Just gives them another leg up. Maybe they'd be willing to take less than what the bank might uh, to hold a mortgage for that simple purpose. Also, not only are they getting the money uh, that they would have gotten from the sale, but they're getting it with a little extra juice. They're getting it with some interest too. So they're making actually more money. Now they'll get it in payments just like the bank would, but nonetheless, they've got interest on it. They're actually making more money that way. And this may make a lot of sense for the seller if perhaps it's not an owner occupied property and maybe they're subjected to uh, paying capital gains taxes on the profits from this sale. 
Well, doing seller financing and taking it over the course of a few years with maybe a balloon payment at the end may reduce their tax burden during those years since they're not getting it all at once. So this could be hugely advantageous to a seller. Very creative options. Now, another would be adjustable rate mortgages. And I know a lot of people cringe as soon as they hear that, you know, the specter of 2008 creeps up on all of us when we hear, uh uh-oh, adjustable rate mortgages. But if you're savvy enough to understand adjustable rate mortgages and how they actually work, uh, it could be uh, an advantageous route for you to take. And here's why. With an adjustable rate mortgage, you have an introductory period. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's five, sometimes it's seven years, sometimes it's 10 years. But during that introductory period, your interest rate is actually locked. The interest rate doesn't actually start adjusting until after that introductory period. And so if you're savvy enough financially and you're willing to take a gamble, um, but you're taking an educated gamble, looking at the markets and projecting where you think interest rates are likely to go, then you can kind of game the system. You could get in with a lower interest rate on an adjustable rate mortgage uh, with a lower fixed rate for the introductory period than you would on a 30-year mortgage. And then when the rates drop, you could refinance out of that product into a more long-term fixed rate product. Now, there's no crystal ball and it's all speculation, if you will, but I'd be hard-pressed to think that in the next two years, uh, we won't see rates drop below six and potentially below five percent i think that's highly likely within the next 18 months to be to be quite frank but that's another option so assumable loans seller financing adjustable rate mortgages are three creative financing types that may be able to help get your home sold or help you purchase a property even amidst an elevated interest rate market that seems to be spooking buyers and sellers alike If you want more information or you want to talk about these type of tactics or ideas, uh, I'm your guy, obviously. Give me a call. Andre Berry, Home Expo Realty, better known as Andre Sells FL. All right, y'all. That's Dre's take.